actionfigureresource.com. Yesterday's toys, today's treasures. Where to buy your figures? We've talked at length about eBay on this site and every toy enthusiast is likely to be familiar with Toys R Us already, but this video should help illuminate some of the other prospective hotspots for action figure collectors. It may be a good idea once you've explored these various suppliers to work out three different places to buy three different kinds of figures. Your brand new off the rack, your bulk lots and your rare chase variants. Depending on just one place for all of these, even eBay does sometimes leave you at a disadvantage, whether it be choice, cost or time and effort. Also on an interpersonal level, if one of these outlets is run by a consistent staff, say your local comic book shop, you have the opportunity to build up a rapport with the seller themselves, which will help out both of you in the long run. High Street Stores these have become incredibly spare in my native England, with Woolworths and Gamleys both going out of business, and only The Entertainer still going. This is due to both the proliferation of Toys R Us and the internet, as well as video games and other tech taking a larger share of children's interest over the past few decades. The owner of The Entertainer chain, Mr. Gary Grant, describes himself as a charismatic evangelical Christian which is why these shops are closed on Sundays, why they tithe their profits, why they do not stock toy machine guns, and most notably, why they sell nothing in connection with the occult, ergo, no Harry Potter. You can also buy toys in Tesco and Sainsbury's with a limited range. Asda tend to have a larger toy section as they are the British representative of Walmart. And of course there's always Argos, who with their extremely well stocked catalogue, were mainstays of my childhood still today rivaling Toys R Us for range, though you will often have to ask the people behind the counter very nicely for specifics if you are buying a random figure from an assortment. Likewise in the USA, Walmart rules the roost, or at least the portion of it that's not ruled by Toys R Us already, as long-running dedicated toy store businesses like KB Toys are routinely bankrupted and forced to close amid the changing economy. It remains a challenge for privately owned businesses to stay afloat. The benefits of buying figures from places like Walmart include their lack of discrimination in selling variants and rare figures. These are pegged along with the rest so that if you have the patience, the know-how and the skills to swoop in the moment the case is cracked open, you can grab the chase figures at retail price, which is usually very reasonable. Of course, you're also competing with all the other collectors who have had the same idea. Specialist Shops this is any comic shop that specifically stocks figures aimed at adult collectors. Again, they are in constant competition with the internet, but the advantages to locating and visiting an actual shop as opposed to ordering online include the ability to actually inspect a figure before you buy it. Most comic book guys tend to be a little more motivated, especially these days, to keep customers loyal so they will be knowledgeable, approachable and occasionally open to negotiation. Remember, they want you to come back more than they want a few more bucks profit on a single figure, but treat them with respect, as you should all retail assistants. Firstly, because it's common courtesy, and secondly, if you want to get mercenary about it, you never know which person you may insult who will later be standing between you and an earnest stock check for a figure you want. Another advantage to it is no postal costs, although balance this against gas money and parking if it applies and the price becomes usually higher than what you would find online and this deduction may not balance the equation if value is your highest priority. The downside of talking to comic book guys is that you tend to go into the shop with money and leave with several new interests and stacks of comics or figures. They can be very persuasive and I say that as a former comic book guy. Amazon. While the search function may be imperfect with often mislabeled figures and the chances of lucky finds and bargains considerably diminished in comparison to the eBay marketplace, Amazon is still a solid place to find your figures. Most current shelf stock is sourced by Amazon themselves or a represented seller and as such often comes with free delivery. Many small businesses and private sellers are also able to supply the same, though mystifyingly often at higher prices than Amazon themselves and without the free delivery. 
It's hard to imagine them selling much without constant checking and adjustment of prices. Online retailers. As well as the obvious monopoly holder Amazon, there are a variety of specialist collector outlets operating online. Forbidden Planet and Forbidden Planet International, two different businesses, see our video on this matter, are great examples of the digital equivalent of their brick and mortar counterparts, which fall under the specialist shops heading of this report. Toy Wiz and Big Bad Toy Store, as well as Culture Shock with a K and Play.com within the UK, also fit this category. They lack the interpersonal element, the negotiation, and the persuasiveness of actually being there, and you will usually have to pay postage, but most of them have sales on regularly, making the chances of a bargain higher. This affords you more of a browsing effect than eBay and Amazon, as they are organized by category. With these places, it is often best to try a range, see which suits your needs best, and crucially, what their customer service is like when problems arise. How they respond to lost, damaged, out of stock, or erroneous items often becomes a deciding factor for me. Also, bear in mind that this applies to all mail order items that are sent by standard post. Mail rooms are not the safest or gentlest of places, and figures especially those packaged by non-professional sellers accustomed to having to refund for damaged items, can receive quite a bit of knocking about. This is another reason why inspecting the figure by hand and taking it home with you is almost always the best policy if pristine mint figure packaging is your top priority. Flea markets, garage sales and car boot sales. The latter two of these are usually held on Sundays, and a little searching can often yield several local results. One of the benefits of flea markets is that the sellers within often come across quantities of old stock that regular stores won't touch, and has limited appeal in a highly competitive media blitz market. This equates to figures that can be many years old now and of niche appeal still in their packaging. It does require hunting and shoe leather. But if you are the sort of person who finds joy in the act of acquisition itself more than the end product, then you can easily make for a day of entertainment cruising the flea markets to pick up some bargains. The drawback is that if you're looking for something very specific, your chances of finding it are negligible. This is more of a lucky dip that rewards tenacity and encyclopedic knowledge of action figure values. What you will mainly find in flea markets, however, is legions of loose vintage action figures, usually stored in an enormous heap with every other kind of figure, usually in pretty shonky condition and usually without accessories. You will know already if this appeals to you. For my purposes, it would allow me to pick up ancient figures for my daughter, extremely cheaply, to better educate her in our heritage. This is the ultimate answer to where do all the figures go once we're done playing with them. To think of these as mass graves would be rather a dark perspective, but third world toy prison certainly sums it up better. It is up to you to decide who to liberate. You'll also find a variety of laughably poor knockoffs, some of which are worth picking up as curios to show your friends. You also have to be prepared to traipse around for hours and find nothing at all. Make the most of good finds you do experience, and if you're very shrewd and know your markets, you can feasibly pick up items to sell on eBay, being sold at a fraction of their value. Although, watch the TV show Hoarders for the worst case scenario of doing this too much without results. Collector fairs and comic cons. These are particularly useful for examining your options and looking at the vast range of figures out there. Effectively, they're like giant covered markets with each stall holder running their own business selling collectibles. A lot of older stock gets shifted here at bargain prices, so you can end up going home with armfuls of impulse buys, which might cost you a lot more online with shipping. You also have the aforementioned ability to examine the items before you buy, which is a rare opportunity now with older carded figures. The drawbacks are that since there is so much on display, your collecting instincts may go into overdrive, and before you head home, you've also started collecting statues, comics, and art prints. Magazines and newspapers. This one is less of a major outlet today, but in the past, local newspapers were the gateway to acquiring figure collections, often at very reasonable prices, being pre-eBay. I myself remember letting go of a backpack full of about 40 vintage Star Wars figures, 
for around seven pounds to some lucky and opportunistic father with a kid he wanted to keep off his personal collection. As with garage sales, this one is usually the preserve of those without access to the internet, so it takes some hunting and rarely yields fantastic results. But there's always a chance you'll find a grandmother with an attic full of baseball cards or some naive boy with a backpack who wants to buy a new Lego set with your seven pounds. Government and local auctions. The locations and times of these are usually hard to track down, but when a business goes into receivership, this is often where the stock ends up and can be bought often in bulk and at low prices due to its specialized appeal. It will take a great deal of digging to find the right connections. Craigslist. Bridging the gap between local paper and eBay, this site of course specializes in all kinds of wanted and for sale ads, including jobs, community, housing, and personal ads. They do have a toys and games section, which again may yield decent results with some hunting. Collector Dash. Last but by no means least, this is a comprehensive site unifying communities of action figure collectors who buy, sell, and trade online. This is too big a subject to go into here, I will simply say a video is forthcoming. Suffice to say, it's more than just a marketplace and can be utilized to curate your existing collection. Every collector should at least check out the website to assess whether it's suitable for their needs. And that covers the main places you can acquire action figures from today. Be sure to check out our eBay guides for a more detailed account of valuing, selling and buying. I've been Alex Shaw, and this is Action Figure Resource. ActionFigureResource.com Yesterday's Toys, Today's Treasures.